A very good evening uh, to you, dear brothers. So today, as we told, uh, we are going to study about one of the great uh, wonders in the world. So as soon as we mentioned the name of Egypt, the thing that comes to our mind is River Nile <clears throat> and uh, its uh, famous uh, pyramids. So the only one of the seven ancient wonders of the world that are still existing is uh, only the Great Pyramid of Giza. The rest all wonders uh, have been totally destroyed. So in Egypt, uh, there are more than, you see, 118 pyramids in all over the world. There are more than 200 pyramids. But the pyramid, what we are going to study, is called the Pyramid of Giza. It is one of the largest uh, pyramid ever built up. The base length of the pyramid is 764 feet and 486 feet high. So almost it covers uh, a 13 acres of land. So what is actually a 13 acres of land? If you need to imagine, just think about the football ground. 10 such a football grounds put together becomes the great uh, pyramid of Giza. It's so huge in uh, structure. Until the 20th century, you see, the Pyramid of Giza was the tallest uh, structure, man-built structure in this world. But recently, when the Burj Khalifa was built, it is uh, much more taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. This uh, <clears throat> pyramid is a very unique pyramid because it has got more than 23 lakh blocks and uh, average, you see, uh, of each and every stone blocks, uh, it is nearly around uh, 16 tons. And uh, overall, the pyramid weighs more than 60 lakh tons. This uh, pyramid, the stones uh, that are craved uh, from the near uh, mines, uh, it is really a wonder how they have done it. Uh, in the olden days without any modern equipment. Sir. You can see some of the boulders here. You see, the man himself is more than nearly around six feet height. So, these blocks are more than nearly 10 feet high. The width is also nearly around eight to nine feet high. You see, so such blocks, they have been, uh, you see, carved uh, from the nearby uh, mines. Uh, how they have carved it uh, and uh, how they have taken it uh, and uh, without any modern equipment, uh, the finishing is uh, very superior. Even with the uh, modern uh, equipment, uh, what they have today, to precisely maintain such precision is not so easy. And they haven't used any mortar or cement to patch each and every box. So the box are just placed one upon another. And they're so finely cut that hardly there is any space for you to insert a thin knife also. So how they have carved it, how they have transported it, from the Sinai Desert to the place where the Great Pyramid is built without any modern equipment many years before. And how they lifted it so high, you see, is still a modern wonder. Originally, this pyramid was covered with uh, casing stones. You can see some of the casing stones here. It was completely covered with this casing stone, white uh, limestone, you see, and the entire pyramid was uh, completely capped on the top with a golden, uh, you see, capstone. So, in ancient days, this pyramid is to look like a jewel in the desert. And it was a landmark, you see, to trace uh, where uh, actually Egypt is there. It was bright shining. It was shining. So that uh, mark uh, was a pyramid. 
that landmark, that glorious light shining, that was showing the direction for the travelers to travel towards Egypt. But today, unfortunately, not many of the limestones are there. Those have been stolen by the caliphs, you see, and they are built uh, their mosque uh, in many of the Middle East countries. So this uh, pyramid, you see, is the only structure that is visible from moon. Apart from that one, none of the human built structure is visible from moon. But from naked eyes, even from moon, they can see the Great Pyramid. <clears throat> the Great Pyramid has so, adds so much of stones <clears throat> that you can build <coughs> a two feet wall around the whole world. And the Great Pyramid is so strong that even today, the Egyptian government doesn't have so much of fund to destroy that Great Pyramid. And the Great Pyramid is located exactly on the center of the earth. So what do you mean by the center of the earth? If you see, the, the geographical land surface on the earth can be divided into four quadrants. You see, uh, northeast, northwest, uh, southeast, southwest. And each of this land is equally proportionate to each other. And this uh, segment passes exactly over the Great Pyramid of Giza. So hence, the Pyramid of Giza is built at the center of the whole world. So without any modern equipment, without any compass or measurement things, how the ancient people built the pyramid as such precise at the center of the whole world is really wonder. Hence, the place is called as Middle East. You see? And the Earth's North Pole, you see, and a South Pole that passes exactly over the pyramid without any minute deviation. And uh, the mathematical formula that we use to find out the relationship between a square and a circle, that is pi. This formula of pi is also found in the pyramid, 22 by 7 or 3.14. This formula, even before it was invented, this is found in the Great Pyramid of Giza. And Isaac uh, Newton, you see, who invented uh, the gravitational uh, uh, theory and who invented the metric system. You see, so this system is already implemented in the pyramid of Giza. See, earlier to these inventions uh, in different parts of the continents of this world, there was actually a different uh, measurement uh, system. There was actually FPS system, CGS system, MKS system. Then came the SI system. So each and every scientific calculations done in different parts of the world had to be converted by other scientists in different other parts of the world and to come into one understanding. It was a huge, uh, you see, a complicated uh, problem. Hence, to solve this one, all the scientists joined together and made a common system that is called as SI system or uh, MKS system, meter kg second system. But this uh, system, which is invented, and this is all come to conclusion recently, it is already implemented in the Pyramid of Giza. And the measurements of the Pyramid of Giza correlate to the ark that was built by Noah. It correlates uh, in much to the measurement that was built in a tabernacle and a Solomon's temple, you see. So there is actually a astronomical uh, calculations uh, that is found uh, in the Pyramid of Giza also. The angle between uh, the the relationship uh, between the angle uh, you see and uh, the perpendicular of the pyramid uh, that actually you see 
signifies uh, the distance uh, uh, between uh, the sun and the moon. Even this, uh, you see, astronomical calculation is used in the construction of the pyramid. And uh, the pyramid has, uh, you see, some uh, ventilation holes. You see, that exactly corresponds to, to two important constellations. Uh, you see, one is Orion, one is uh, Draco. So these particular names only we can signify uh, what it means. And it is given in the book of Job also. Uh, and uh, this pyramid entrance, if you draw a straight line from the pyramid's entrance uh, that is going to the descending passage, continuing the descending passage, if you draw a straight line, that comes exactly to Jerusalem and the place where actually Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So, today in the world, we have uh, different uh, time zones. The green which mean uh, meridian, you see, that meridian actually bifurcates the time zone into different uh, parts all over the world. But a scientist believe that if this time zone is made to pass through this pyramid, the entire world will be having a common time. And the base length of the pyramid is actually 365 and a quarter pyramid inches. Now what does that signify? We all know, dear brethren, we have 365 and a quarter days in a year. That exactly signifies number of, you see, days in our calendar. So who built it? Why they built it? What is the purpose of it? Nobody knows. Some people have claimed that it is a Khufu's grave. You see, and the body was preserved there. And some relics are there. But to be clear uh, upon this one, there was no body found in this pyramid. Although there were bodies, mummies were found in different pyramids. But in this pyramid, there is no such mummies that were found, nor any treasure of anybody was found in the pyramid. And not only that one, in other pyramids, there are, you see, so many carvings on the wall. You see, about uh, why and who, uh, you see, about whom this pyramid is constructed. But in this pyramid, there is no such carvings signifying that this belongs to Khufu. And uh, all the other pyramids, you see, the chambers, you see, and the uh, uh, entrances, uh, you see, all are below ground level. You see, the passages, the chambers, the entrance, everything is actually below the ground level. But in this pyramid only, all the chambers and all the passages are above ground level. So some claim that it is a space observatory built during the Egyptian time to study space. You see, and some believe that uh, this is a alien launch pad, aliens have come and landed and forgotten and left it like that only. And still some people believe it is a secret vault, you see, to build, to preserve some very important and precious, you see, thing. But, uh, dear brethren, imagine who will build uh, a secret vault with all this mathematical, astronomical, uh, geographical, uh, you see, Huh? An algebra calculations and all. Who will build a secret vault? And moreover, nothing secret or nothing precious was found there. So this all puts us a question, who built it? Dear brethren, whatever the world may tell, or the Bible tells that this must be built by God. And this is built by God and none other than God himself. So some, uh, there are speculations that uh, this might be built by, you see, one of the uh, ancient worthies uh, who lived uh, in the Middle East, one of the richest person in the Middle East, 
That is Jobba. So Jobba, we all know, was a very, very rich person. He was a multimillionaire. So Job might have used somebody to build it up. And still some people tell that it was built by Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a, you see, high priest of the Most High God to whom actually Abraham paid tithes. So they claim that Melchizedek might have built it up. But dear brethren, all these are speculations. There is no proof for it from the Bible. But uh, is there any relation to this pyramid to the Bible? If you see, yes, there is some relation. Let us see uh, Ephesians 2.20. Peter, brother, can you read Ephesians 2.20? Okay. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Thank you, brother. So Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. You see, see, which is this corner stone? Whenever somebody builds a house, they usually believe that the first stone that is laid, that is called as the corner stone. But for a house to be built upon, how can only one stone be the main chief corner stone? Because uh, the entire, uh, you see, weight rests upon uh, the four corners. Uh, so out of the four corners, which can you tell as a chief corner stone? David Ren, it is very difficult. Uh, but uh, this can be easily and exactly and correctly said only, you see, in this great pyramid. Uh, you see, the great pyramid actually has, you see, corners. How many corners are there? If you see, there are actually five corners. See, in the bottom there are four corners, but on the top there is a fifth corner. And that fifth corner is a very, very important corner. Because if that corner is not there, if you remove the top stone, the pyramid itself loses its structure. It loses its perfection. So this perfection and this, uh, you see, can be found only in the pyramid. And moreover, the pyramid is such a structure that whichever way you rotate, whichever way you do it, you see, whichever way you put it upside down, the pyramid remains the pyramid, though you turn whichever way you want. So hence, the pyramid can be turned as a perfect structure. Hence, we see in the divine plan chart, the pyramid structure is used to signify perfect mankind. So, all these are uh, indirect references, but is there any direct reference to it in the Bible? Yes, it is there. Where is it given? Isaiah 19, chapter 19 and 20. Santosh, brother, can you read Isaiah 19, chapter 19 and 20, brother? In that, <coughs> sorry, in that day, Shall there be any altar to the Lord in the midst of the Lord of the Egypt and a pillar at the border there of to the Lord and the and it mm, shall be thereof a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of the hoops in the land of Egypt. Okay, thank you for that. So here, if you see, it says, in that day, there shall be an altar to the Lord in the middle of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof. So how can one structure be at the border as well as the center of Egypt? That's highly impossible. But that one can be found only in this perimeter. You see, this pyramid is exactly located at the center of the entire Egypt. 
and this Egypt is divided equally to two parts that is Upper Egypt and the Lower Egypt. And uh, this border of the Upper Egypt and the Lower Egypt crosses exactly on the center of this great pyramid. Hence, uh, this pyramid name is called as Pyramid of Giza. Giza means what? You see, Giza means border. You see, therefore, this name is given as a Pyramid of Giza, Pyramid at the border. So, Isaiah clearly says, so this is a reference to the Great Pyramid of Giza. If this is a great reference to the Great Pyramid of Giza, then surely there must be God's plan, you see, in it. So, what is the God's plan? Dear brethren, you see, we have been studying so many classes. Sir. And by this time, we should have understood uh, many of the basic important things. Sir. So, this pyramid clearly shows to us what is the plan of God, which God has made for the entire mankind. So, in this pyramid, if you see, there are, you see, two chambers above the ground level. One chamber below the ground level. You see, the king's chamber, the queen's chamber and the pitta. And there are, you see, three passages connecting to these uh, three chambers. You see, one is a ascending passage, other is a descending passage, and one is the horizontal passage. So, these three passages lead to three chambers. And the entrance for the pyramid is the 17th floor. You see? And uh, this 17 for uh, entrance was uh, very difficult to found out. Hence, uh, the thieves uh, dug uh, a entrance on the 10th floor. Okay. So, as soon as somebody enters uh, the pyramid, the first chamber, the first passage that they find uh, before them is the descending passage. So, descending passage, you see, uh, is a passage that leads to the pit. And what is the height of the descending passage? If you see, the height of the descending passage is just four feet high. A man who is uh, upright can't walk uh, in this uh, pyramid. He has to go down himself uh, and to walk. Uh. You can see this uh, you see photo. You see, this is how... The descending passage is there. So, anybody willing to walk perfectly, they can't walk it. Even though they try many things. You see, different. So, they have to go and walk, you see, down the descending passage. And the descending passage is so smooth and so, you see, deep or, you see, downward that automatically a man, if he enters the pyramid, he directly comes to the pit. So, in between, if he wants to change his way also, he is not able to change it. So, what does this signify? This signifies the broad way. The broad way of sin that was, you see, inaugurated by a first man, Adam. You see, huh? Jesus said, no, about two ways. We have studied about this one in the three-way class. You see, what did Jesus say? Let us read Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Uh, Samiksha, sister. Can you read Matthew 7, 13 and 14, sister? Yes. Uh, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and the broad is the way that lead to the destruction. And many there be which go in there, because straight the gate and the narrow is the way, which lead into life, and few there be that find it. Thank you, sir. So, Jesus spoke about the two ways. You see, the narrow way and the broad way. You see, the broad way leading to destruction. You see, so as soon as a man enters uh, this descending passage, by default, he comes to the pit. Uh, you see, there is no way to escape. Uh, even then, a man wants to stand upright. Uh, he is not meant to do it. Uh, because all have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. So ultimately, they have to go down to this pit. You see, now what is the cause of this, uh, you see, walking on the descending passage? Sin. You see, the Bible says, all unrighteousness is sin. 
Adam was the one who inaugurated this way and walked this way. It took him nearly 930 years to completely descend into sin and fall into the pitta. But today, the way has become so easy that uh, within a short period uh, of uh, 30, 50, 60 years, uh, man reaches his end, death. Let us read Romans 5.12. Uh, Romans 5.12. Ganesh Padar, can you read Romans 5.12? It's okay. Therefore, as by one man sin enter into the world, and death by sin, and so death passes upon all men, for that all have very good. Brother. So, where were by one man sin enter into the world? It is because of only one man, Adam, the sin came into the world. And because of sin, what happened? Death. And God knew that as Adam has sinned, the entire mankind will sin. Therefore, he condemned the entire mankind into sin through Adam. Therefore, the whole mankind are walking in this descending passage of the broad way through Adam. Where does it go? You see, it goes to the pitta. That means what? Death. We read now, Proverbs 14, 12. Huh? Read. Santosh Mother, can you read Proverbs 14, 12? There is a way which sin gives right unto a man, but the end Thereof are the ways of death. Ah, there is a way that seemeth right to man, but the end thereof is <clears throat> death. You see, the ultimate end is death. You see, and uh, what is there in the pit? If you see, there is nothing in the pit. You see, in the pit, if you go in the pyramid, there is no water, there is no well. You see, there is no water also. You see, that is just a pit, a dry pit. What does this signify? This signifies the hopeless condition of mankind in the grave. Read Zechariah 9.11. Uh, Samiksha, can you read Zechariah 9.11? Yes. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent for thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is now at her. Very good. Sir. Thank you. So, wherein there is no water. That means, where uh, there is no hope at all. Every prisoner, you see, are uh, condemned to death. Uh, these prisoners of death. Uh, you see, but Jesus has redeemed us through his blood uh, from the pit, where there is no water. In the pit of the pyramid, there is no water at all. So, similarly, this is hopeless condition, Jesus as a general. Okay. Now, as you come down the descending passage, there is a passage that is called as the ascending passage that leads to the two chambers above the ground level. Again, this ascending passage is nearly four feet high. You see? And uh, this uh, ascending passage if you see if it can be accessed, it can't be accessed. Nobody can climb up the ascending passage because this ascending passage is blocked by a huge granite plug, a 50 ton huge granite plug. What does this signify? You see, this signifies the law, the way of the law. You see, God gave the law through Moses and if anybody kept the law, they would have attained eternal life without seeing death. That was Leviticus 18, 5 says. But unfortunately, none of the mankind could gain access to eternal life to the two chambers through this ascending passage. Why? It was as if it is blocked. So the law could not do anything good for mankind. You see, so law was... Uh, nullified. Law did not benefit to mankind. Let us read uh, Romans 3.20. Ganesh brother, can you read Romans 3.20? You have the Bible with you? Romans 
Romans 3.20. Yes, Peter. Just a minute. Three twenty. Okay. Uh, therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. Uh, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Very good, brother. By deeds of the law, no man shall be justified because his knowledge of sin. So hence, uh, this uh, ascending passage was of no use. But then is there no way for man to be saved? Yes, there is one more way. As uh, you come down the descending passage, just before going to pit, there is a way that climbs up uh, to the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. And that is called as the well shaft. So one who is not able to access to the ascending passage, the same way can be accessed through this uh, Passage that is called the well shaft. Now, what does that signify? You see, when there was no way from the broad way, God sent his son to die on the cross. And through the sacrifice of Jesus, he has opened a new and a living way for mankind. Read Hebrews 10:20. Ganesh Mother, can you read Hebrews 10:20? Hebrews 10:20. 10, By a new and living way which he considered for us through the well that he is placed. Thank you, brother. By a new and a living way which he had consecrated for us, uh, that is through his uh, flesh. Jesus by death uh, on the cross, he opened the veil through which uh, we have access to, to the heaven, to the throne of God. Hence, Jesus said, I am the way, the way and the life. There is no other salvation than the name of Jesus under this heaven. Therefore, through the well shaft, the man can come and access these two chambers, the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. So, this uh, is the way of salvation, the narrow way that is opened by our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come this uh, well shaft, there is a place called as grotto. You see? And that grotto has got a natural rock formation which uh, is like the head uh, of a lamb. Now what does this signify? We all know who is the lamb of God? Who can tell me? Who is the lamb of God? Jesus Christ. Very good. Jesus Christ. So that signifies the sacrifice of Jesus. The Jesus is the Lamb of God through which uh, we are being able to save. It. So, that well shaft opens at opening where all the ways get connected. So Jesus is the way. He is the life for all the rest of the mankind. You see, through Jesus, we can get life. It is only through Jesus that we are able to get life. Hence, Jesus, we all know, is called as the world savior. He is not the savior only for Christians. He is the savior for entire mankind. So, through this uh, way, we are able to access these two chambers. Now, what does the two chambers signify? One is the king's chamber. Below that one is the queen's chamber. So, the king's chamber signifies the heavenly salvation, while below it, uh, the queen's chamber signifies the earthly salvation. We all know God has made a plan for our whole mankind, but in that plan, there are two salvations, heavenly salvation and earthly salvation. But how do you go to this king's chamber? You can't just walk away directly to it. We need to pass through three another chambers. First is the grand gallery. Second is the antechamber. And then only you can enter the king's chamber. Now what does this one signify? Jesus said, you see, the called, the chosen and faithful. 
So it is the called people only who become the chosen people. It is only the chosen people who prove their faithfulness unto death. Then only they can be part of that heavenly salvation. See, after coming out from this well shaft, this grand gallery, a grand gallery is really grand and it is nearly, you see, almost seven times larger than the ascending passage. That means the ascending passage is four feet. This is nearly 28 feet in height. And a man who is not able to walk directly perfectly in the ascending passage, who had to go, and he can stand upright and walk in this ascending passage. Now, what does this signify? If you see, you, you see, you can see the photos of the ascending passage. This is how really it looks. See, though it was very difficult for man to walk in this uh, ascending uh, passage, but here he can comfortably walk. And uh, for him to walk, there are holes uh, nearby. You see, on the side of the walls. So, what does that signify? That signifies the help uh, that is given by God in the gospel age. One who was not able to walk properly in the law age, that is the Jewish age, he can walk comfortably in the gospel age because of grace of God. That whole signifies the grace of God which helps us to walk ahead in a narrow way and attain heavenly salvation. But uh, before going to the king's chamber, a great step has to be taken. You see, huh? And next, uh, the antechamber, you see, then only they can go to the king's chamber. But before going, he had to bow down three times. You see, literally bow down. Then only, you see, go to the king's chamber. What does it signify? What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what did Jesus say? The terms and conditions. Let us read Matthew 16.24. Samik sister, can you read Matthew 16.24? Yes. Then said Jesus unto his disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take off his cross and follow me. See, the three steps. Deny himself, first one. You see, then take up the cross. Then be faithful till death. Follow him. So after doing the three steps faithfully only, a person can come to the king's chamber. So this is the terms of the discipleship. You see, so once you come to the king's chamber, what is there in the king's chamber? There is an empty box that is called as coffer, not coffin. Please make the difference. It is not coffin, it's a coffer. So, you know, that uh, specialty of coffer, you know, what's the size of it? It is exactly the size of the Ark of the Covenant that was placed in the tabernacle. Same measurement is used here. So what does it signify? This signifies the immortal nature. There is no death at all. You see, there is no cover at all. That means there is no death. The death is overcome victoriously. This signifies the immortal nature which the church is promised. Read Revelation 20, verse 6. Santosh Pudar, can you read Revelation chapter 20, verse 6? Are you able to read? I'm sorry, I can't. Okay, somebody else can read? Peter, brother. Okay. <clears throat> Blessed and holy is the holy is he that had part of part in the first resurrection. On source, the second death had no power, but they, they shall be perished of God and of Christ, and shall regain with him a thousand years. Thank you, brother. So, upon them, there is no power of second death. 
But they shall reign with Christ for a thousand years, sir. Immortal nature. So we know God's plan. It is not only there is only heavenly salvation, there is earthly salvation also. What about the rest of mankind who doesn't believe Jesus now? Has God made a plan? Yes, that is earthly salvation. That earthly salvation is beautifully shown here in the horizontal passage that is leading to the queen's chamber. Queen's chamber is lower than the king's chamber. That means uh, heavenly salvation. Which is lower than that one? Heavenly salvation, if you see, that's the earthly salvation. And uh, they have to walk through this horizontal passage and then come to the queen's chamber. And the speciality of this horizontal passage is that it can be equally divided into seven parts. The first six parts, man is not able to walk perfectly. But in the last seventh part, a man is able to walk perfectly, stand. You see, you can see the photo here. The first six parts, a man is to bow. The seventh part, he can stand perfectly. You see? So what does that signify? If you see, dear brethren, the 6,000 years of sin. You see, a dark, uh, you see, period of sin, night of sin, from sin of Adam till Jesus' second coming is a period of 6,000 years. Uh. So in this one, man is not able to walk perfectly in the sight of God. But when Christ comes and rules for a thousand years, uh, a man who is not able to walk perfectly now is able to walk perfectly then in Christ's kingdom. So everybody in Christ, uh, they shall be saved. They will all come to the queen's chamber means earthly salvation. Therefore, God has made a plan and given Jesus a period of thousand years to rule so that he may bring mankind from the fallen condition back to perfection. So dear brethren, so this is the, the pyramid. You see the secret of the pyramid how God's plan is hidden in the pyramid. So if anybody has got any doubts, any clarification, they can ask.